Hey everyone, it's Jen with Spirited Saturdays, except it's Friday because it feels like the right day to make this video, so um, don't mind the switcheroo. I never say that word. It's first for everything. So, welcome to Friday. We are now on the second week of our rotation, which explores loss. And this week we're talking about ways of coping with loss. I'm very grateful that this this particular topic, for me personally, it's coming at a, a good time um, because I, just a few days ago, I went through a loss, um, a separation, and um, I feel like it's it's just interesting how it, it has lined up because when we created this rotation, I didn't realize that it was going to line up. So this is all very in the moment. So one way to cope with loss is to have a support network, have people who are going to help you, who are going to offer their help to you, who are going to really want to be there for you and, and hear you and want to guide you um, as best as they can and um, to really allow them in your life and to not feel guilty asking for their support because you know that you would give it to them if they needed it. So if it's a balanced friendship, then it's it's okay right now to just receive. I mean, that is so important when you're going through a loss to allow yourself the time and the space and give yourself the permission to receive. Another way of really coping with the loss is to be honest with yourself at all times to be honest with your process with whatever comes up and to feel what you're feeling and to understand that the feelings are not, you know, by the very nature of what's occurring, they're not going to be positive all the time. They're not going to be these feelings of, of uh, feeling, you know, great and, and positive and having a great outlook on life and um, they're, they're going to suck, they're going to feel horrible. And, um, but the other thing is that you can anticipate relief from those feelings. Often with loss, I think things come in waves. So, you know, it's all about how you ride the wave and you can make that manageable for yourself in the ways that that becomes manageable is you can fix or you can kind of look examine your your cognition examine the judgment that you put on the wave examine the judgment that you put on yourself when you're thinking about what's going on you can really you know be gentle with yourself and be understanding with yourself and and kind of just coach yourself through that and allow others to coach you through it as well so the wave will will be there regardless, but you get to choose how you ride it. You can choose to have boundaries with your process. So it's very important because it may seem like you're in this tunnel and there's nothing on either side of the tunnel, but there there are there are things on either side of, of the tunnel. So it's important to, when you notice yourself becoming engulfed in something, to remember and to reach out and to make conscious decisions and take conscious action in order to um, remind yourself that there are other things in the world than the loss that you are experiencing. And that isn't to invalidate. That is to um, just help kind of maybe switch gears when you feel like you're really, really sinking. And then there are times when you you can absolutely allow yourself to, you know, just completely be be with your feelings. But but as you're doing that, be aware of them and, and do something that will help you release them. Don't just swallow them. You know, talk to people, you know, let yourself cry and let yourself you know, and write, and write, whether you're writing to yourself or you're writing to somebody else, write, journal, do something creative uh, with your voice, with your 
create the creative part of your mind, it is necessary to feel the extent of of your pain. And it, it's also possible to not cross over into creating suffering from that pain. So there's there is a line and there is a boundary between pain and suffering. And you that's when you can choose not to create more suffering on top of pain that is completely natural to feel. Once we experience loss, the next time we experience loss, we can reflect and we can remember that it, the pain ends, the pain passes, and we can see in hindsight that we've learned from this. But when you're, when you're in it, it doesn't really matter how many times you've been in it before, it it's it's not fun. So that is, you know, why you have to treat yourself like and your health and your you know, emotional, mental, physical health with the utmost generosity and make it a priority. And call upon the people in your life who you know can help you. And if you're seeing a therapist, be with them. Talk to them you know, really use their expertise. It's better to experience all of the depth of that makes you you, that comprises you and your humanness and your capability to feel and have experiences. It is worth it. It is more worth it to go through that than it is to go to numb yourself out and use an unhealthy coping mechanism, like with the eating disorder, but like any, any other thing. It's worth it to experience the feelings. And it's not easy. But look at an eating disorder. Even though it may seem like an easy fix in the moment, in the long run, it's more difficult. It creates more. And, and the feelings that you're feeling now, if you don't let yourself feel them, later they're going to come out somehow. And... If you're using an eating disorder to cope, they're going to be compounded with now the damage of the eating disorder, and it's it's just going to be so much worse. So important to remind yourself that this, in the grand scheme of things, this loss is not worth creating more and more damage from some unhealthy coping mechanism that's going to maybe make it seem a little more manageable in the very short run but be very, very, create more damage in the long run. So just know if you are going through a loss that I, I'm, I, I support you and that you have support and that you know that you're safe and that nothing can happen to you in this life that can threaten your internal safety. Nothing can really happen no experience can break you down. Um, no experience can really, really break you down. And you are stronger than you know and than you feel. No external experience, no interaction, no loss, no anything has the power to break you down. So you can always, always survive just by being you and just by living through it. And when you live through it, you're going to be better for it. And you're going to have a more enriched understanding of yourself of life, of people, of interaction, of everything. I mean, it's going to, every experience we have teaches us. And uh, even if we can't see it in the moment, and even if we can't know what that lesson is in the moment, it is a, life is a teacher. Uh, so embrace it, um, embrace it, and go with the tide of it <laughs> and it's going to be okay so stay with the feelings and um, don't get swallowed up in them but stay with them 
and remember that the horrible feelings are not all there is. Um, thank you for listening and watching, and I hope that um, you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye.